Hello, and welcome to everyone joining us. My name is Brandon Ward, Director of Re-Exhibition's Mining Portfolio, and I'll be supporting today's presenter. This content is brought to you by Re-Exhibition's Mining Portfolio, comprising Amex, QME, and WA Mining. This is the first of an ongoing series of videos and webinars where we will present both live and pre-recorded sessions on a broad range of topics. As this session is pre-recorded, please leave questions for the speaker in the comments section below, and we will address these at a later date. If you're interested in attending future webinars or one of our events, please visit, on, please visit um, any of the website links below for more information. There is also a link for more information regarding today's content and the Entrepreneurs Program below. I'm now pleased to introduce today's speaker, Melissa Anderson, Director of the Entrepreneurs Program at Oz Industry. Melissa has a background in the SME sector in both China and Australia, originally commencing with the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade in Shanghai, China. Melissa went on to found and direct a successful IT and business consulting enterprise in Shanghai and co-founded and directed a construction and manufacturing company with operations across China. Melissa has consulted with the SME and corporate sector in Australia across a variety of industries in a range of fields, including strategy, digital transformation, international trade and market development, marketing, product development, and management systems. Melissa has also worked in an executive strategy role in the insurance and finance industry in Australia and participated in the leadership team of Australia's second largest financial industry merger. Now, over to you, Melissa, for today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Um, now, I know that some of these um, government program presentations can be a bit dry, so I'm going to move quite briskly <laughs> through the presentation. If you need more detail at any point in time, uh, you can go to business.gov.au and search for the Entrepreneurs Program. You'll get all sorts of details there, um, including our eligibility guidelines. Um, you'll also get to access some of our customers' stories and hear it from our customers' mouths. Uh, and uh, another important section there on the website is a section about our business advisors and facilitators. Uh, you can search for a business advisor or facilitator from the Entrepreneurs Program in that area on the website. You can find them by the MET sector and then by their uh, geography. Um, so it, at any point in time, if you haven't got the right amount of details, uh, please feel free to go to the website uh, and I'll kick off the presentation. Uh, so who are we? Uh, the Entrepreneurs Program delivers advice, networking and grants to help Australian businesses grow nationally and globally. Uh, we are a public-private partnership. So the federal government funds the program and employs a network of business experts from around Australia to work one-on-one -on -one with Australian small and medium-sized enterprises. We work with five sectors nationally. Uh, we don't work with all industry sectors. The METS sector is one of the sectors that we work with. We also work with advanced manufacturing, food and agribusinesses. We work with mining, engineering and technology services. And we also work with what we call enabling services. So IT, digital and professional services. The Entrepreneurs Program's goal is to build self-reliant Australian businesses that are competitive in a global setting. Uh, and we do that through four lenses, if you like. We, we look at growth, we look at innovation, commercial, commercialization, and more recently, we're starting to look at um, the idea of strengthening our businesses to be more resilient in times of trouble. So for instance, the bushfires and more recently COVID-19. The story to date. So the program was initially founded in 2014. It's changed a bit over time, but predominantly stayed the same in terms of its intent. We've assisted over 15,000 businesses uh, with um, direct one-to-one -one tailored advice. And we've provided over $300 million to date in matched grant funding. Our businesses tend to do well when they leave the program or indeed while they still stay with the program. Uh, our research has shown us that in the first 12 to 24 months um, post-engagement with the program, on average, our customers have increased their turnover by $1.3 million. 
There are many other benefits uh, for our businesses in engaging with the Entrepreneurs Program, um, and we'll talk to those a little bit later on. The most significant part of the programs I spoke to earlier is our network of business advisors. So we have about 140 at the moment around the country. Uh, some of them are specialists in industry sectors. We have specialists who work with just mining, engineering, technology, services, businesses. Uh, and we also have some generalists. They're located in uh, major cities around the country, but also regional areas throughout the country as well. The Entrepreneurs Programs I mentioned looks at four, looks at uh, working with businesses through four lenses, growth, innovation, commercialization, and strength. And within each of those areas, we have different services that we can offer businesses. But basically, once you come into the Entrepreneurs Program and you're a member of the Entrepreneurs Program, we can help you navigate through all of the different opportunity sets, whether it's growth, innovation, commercialization, or to strengthen your business. Uh, again, uh, the business.gov.au website's the best place to go for lots of the uh, more uh, detailed uh, aspects of the program, including uh, a lot of the detail around eligibility. So let me talk to the first aspect of the program, growth. And this is the bulk of the program. It picks up about 70% of the businesses that come through the program. It's the front door, if you like. Uh, and the goal with our growth uh, program is to ensure that our businesses understand what their potential is and have a roadmap to be able to reach their full potential. We do that through a combination of advice and co-investment with you with grants of up to $20,000 in matched funding. That matched funding is 50-50, so uh, we'll pay half, you pay half, uh, to the total of $40,000. In our growth program, we have three different services that we offer. The front door, if you like, is our business evaluation. That's a broad service. Uh, when you come into the program, you'll be assigned a business advisor to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, uh, and they will undertake a discovery process with you across your business from finances through to operations, uh, through to culture, employees, your digital footprint, your markets, your sales approach. Uh, and we'll look at your strengths and weaknesses and some opportunities for you to grow your business uh, and to uh, reach your full potential. In that process, we'll do some action planning with you, uh, come up with a, a roadmap for you to uh, work on over the, over the next 12 to 18 months. And then we'll give you access to some funding and connections to experts in the private sector and in publicly funded research organisations who can help you enact the actions that, uh, that, that you've got mapped out in front of you. Uh, so that's the business evaluation. And typically one of those engagements will last for up to 18 months with intensive support at the beginning uh, and then coaching and mentoring as you move through your journey. The growth services uh, service typically will follow on from a business evaluation, which is a broad review of your business and its capability. If It's about building your platform for growth. Growth services is different in that it focuses very narrowly into a specific growth opportunity that you've identified for your business. That might be a new product that you are developing and wanting to take to market. That might be a new international market that you're seeking to reach. It may also be, for instance, a complete business model transformation. You might be wanting to use digital technology to pivot the way your business works. So growth services, again, follows a similar format to the business evaluation in that you have an intensive discovery process at the beginning and then up to two years of coaching and mentoring and support as you uh, work on your growth plan with your business advisor. That service is also eligible for our grant funding. It is matched funding. It's a co-investment with you of uh, $20,000 from the government, $20,000 uh, from you to help you uh, work on some of the, the actions that have been um, mapped out in your growth services plan. Uh, supply chain facilitation is the third service in our growth area and supply chain facilitation operates quite differently. Our goal with supply chain facilitation is to help our businesses, our SMEs, become the best possible suppliers within their existing supply chains and for new supply chains. 
Uh, we will identify a major buyer to work with. So, for instance, in the food industry, we're working with, a com with, working with companies like Aldi, uh, and we will work with them on their uh, current suppliers, uh, on areas that they believe their current suppliers can improve in and innovate in, in order to obtain more work with that particular buyer and or to make them better suppliers for other supply chains as well. Um, we've done quite a lot of work in supply chain facilitating um, in the METS uh, sector and we're, uh, we have several active projects at the moment. There's more details on business.gov.au about the supply chain facilitation projects if you are interested. Um, in terms of eligibility for our growth area of the program, uh, you do need to have an ABN who'd be registered for a GST. We need you to be a company structure. We also require a minimum of three years trading uh, history um, so that we can um, not kill you with our love. Um, we, we need businesses that have a degree of maturity in the systems and processes and the way in which they work in order for us to optimise outcomes in the growth area. Um, we need you also to be earning or burning one point, a minimum of $1.5 million per annum in any of the three preceding financial years up to a maximum of $100 million per annum. The exception to this is for our businesses in remote Australia and in Northern Australia, and many of our METS customers are in remote or Northern Australian areas. Uh, in that instance, we are able to drop our uh, eligibility criteria to a minimum of $750,000 burn or burn in any given year in the three preceding years. There's more details on our website. Uh, you can apply by um, uh, lodging an application via our website, or if you'd like to speak to a human being about it, feel free to find an advisor or facilitator in your area in the MET sector by going into the Entrepreneurs Program and searching for advisors and facilitators. So the next part of our program that we like to focus on is innovation. And in particular, we are looking at innovation through the lens of um, helping our businesses understand their research needs and then connecting our businesses with the research sector uh, and then funding some collaborative research projects. Again, it's a combination of advice and co-investment. Uh, the first step is to work with one of our innovation facilitators. They're quite unique human beings. They are able to speak business and also speak research with publicly funded research organisations. Their role is to bridge the gap, is to interpret for you and your business what your research project might be, help you map that research project out, and then work with the publicly funded research organisations around Australia to find the right research organisation and the right researcher to match to your research project. Once we've done that, we can then apply some funding to the project to help it launch. So that funding is a $50, up to $50,000 per project, matched funding, 50-50. So a, up to a total project value of $100,000 uh, in matched funding. Uh, with that particular research project, the research, we can uh, run it one of two ways. We can either pick up a researcher and place them inside your business, uh, theoretically, to be able to run those projects. Or conversely, we're able to pick up a researcher that sits within your business and place them into a publicly funded research organisation. There's more details about that on the website. The third element to our innovation um, uh, focus is our graduate placement. This is a great offering. Uh, we are able to uh, support a grad to be placed in your business to work on a specific research project inside your business and uh, provide you with grant funding of up to $30,000 uh, to place uh, toward that uh, graduate's um, uh, income for that period of time while they're with your business. Uh, historically, with our grad placement programs, more than 90% of the graduates who are placed with our businesses stay with our businesses beyond the research project uh, and are offered ongoing employment. Uh, eligibility is the same as our uh, growth um, program. Uh, we need you to have an ABN and to be registered for GST, three years trading, 
earning a burning 1.5 to 100 million and or 750K for remote businesses. And there's a few more details on the website, but METS businesses are eligible for this um, part of our service offering. Another part of our innovation offering is our incubator support service. Uh, and essentially this provides funding to incubators around Australia uh, that assist Australian startups. Um, we will co-invest on a project with an uh, incubator up to the value of 250,000. Uh, and that is matched funding and it's dependent on where you're located as to what that matched funding is. Again, please feel free to go to the website for more details on how that works. The second part of our incubator support program is to fund expert in residence um, projects. So we can fund up to $100,000, again, in matched funding to place an expert into your incubator who will assist your businesses uh, to grow and develop their expertise and capability in the area of your focus for your incubator. Uh, eligibility, so existing or new incubators uh, can apply. And it does include, uh, we can also work with not-for-profits, publicly funded research organisation and local governments on that incubator support initiative. More details on the website. Our uh, commercialisation is our other area of focus for the Entrepreneurs Program. Uh, and this area provides uh, successful applicants with expert guidance and grants to be able to find the right commercialization solutions for novel products, processes and services. Uh, per all of our other aspects of our program, the advice component is a significant component of the program. Um, and uh, our co-investment options with commercialization is uh, that we can co-invest a total of up to $1 million for projects that are uh, successful and approved uh, and up to $250,000 for projects when uh, the applicant is a commercialisation office, usually in a publicly funded research organisation uh, and some other eligible entities. Uh, eligibility for commercialisation Australia is a little more complex and I'd recommend that you spend some time on the website having a look through the eligibility requirements. It's essentially a two-phase uh, application process with an expression of interest uh, first uh, and at the expression of interest uh, stage an expert will be looking across your application uh, and assessing whether or not you'll meet the criteria to go forward. If you are successful at that stage, you will be uh, appointed a one-on-one -on -one, uh, expert to guide you through the second stage of the application process and to provide you with commercialisation advice along the way. If you are successful, uh, you will receive a grant uh, depending on how much you apply for and um, your project. Uh, so as you will see in the eligibility criteria, you must have a novel product process or service and for definitions around what novel is, please have a look on the website. Um, you need to have a, a for-profit company registered and operating in Australia or you need to agree to form one should you be successful in your application. You need to be undertaking an eligible project and the definition of an eligible project is quite substantial, so I direct you to the website for that. But importantly, you need to have a turnover of less than $20 million for each of the three preceding financial uh, years. In addition to our areas of focus, we have our specialist facilitators. Our specialist facilitators go across all aspects of the Entrepreneurs Program, and they are experts in the areas of technology, digital and customer-led design. Once you join the Entrepreneurs Program, you can have access to these specialist facilitators for deep dives in each of those specific areas. In our technology area, our, our focus is typically around physical technology. Uh, so our advisors can go to your factory or your premises uh, or indeed to your work sites and see your, how your work flows, have a look at your equipment, what technology you're currently using, and help you optimise your current footprint with technology. They are incredibly well connected. I have great, uh, um, a great knowledge of current technology and future technology and are able to connect you to experts and equipment uh, that will meet your individual business needs. Uh, the other area of specialty is our digital area. 
and we have a number of different advisors in this area. Uh, we can look at your digital operations within your business, uh, help you uh, find areas for improvement uh, and recommend specific solutions to meet your business's specific needs. Uh, we can also look at how your business operates and think about transforming your business model by using new technologies. We can connect you to experts in the field and vendors who have uh, um, offerings that might meet your individual needs. Uh, both of those services um, are eligible for the grant funding. So you can use some of those grant funding that I spoke about to uh, um, against some of these services to deploy new technology and um, digital um, products within your business. The third area is a specialist team of customer-led designers. Uh, and they are here to help your businesses pivot to become uh, high performance customer centric organizations. They have a range of services that they can offer and they can tailor them to your individual business needs. Uh, that's the finish of my summary for uh, the standard entrepreneurs program and how it works. And I'd like to move on now and just walk you through some of the insights around how we're working with mining, engineering, technology and service businesses. And in particular, what we're seeing at the moment in relation to COVID-19 and uh, the um, issues that our METS businesses are currently facing. Uh, so on your screen at the moment, you'll see a summary slide. Uh, we've chosen the 2018-19 financial year uh, to demonstrate the type of outcomes that our businesses are experiencing whilst they work with us in the Entrepreneurs Program. So in 18-19, our businesses had a total sales revenue of $8 billion with $226 million in export revenue. The, uh, the total number of employees employed by our businesses in the 18-19 year was 9,000 employees. During their time with our program, uh, the average revenue growth for those businesses was about 14%, change in exports around $10 million, and change in full-time uh, equivalent employees of around 280. The average EBITDA for the sector the, of the clients that we work with is uh, in the 18-19 year is 7%. Uh, our standard services with the Entrepreneurs Program have recently pivoted in relation to the challenges that our industries are facing with the COVID-19 uh, scenario. Uh, on March 22, we changed the way that we work with our businesses and we've pivoted to what we are calling a rapid response service. That rapid response service is starting to wrap up and we're moving back into our normal services moving forward. What we're observing in the rapid response phase is uh, a range of aspects around business sentiment, risk, current challenges that our businesses are looking at, how their strategies might need to change uh, and what they're looking forward to in the next six to 12 months. Sentiment, as of uh, last week, when we cut sentiment across our sectors of the businesses that we're working with, you can see that METS is actually one of our highest, um, most positive sentiment sectors. Uh, this is a snapshot in time. Uh, we tend to see that METS is faring much better than, um, for instance, our food and agribusiness sector, where in particular our food manufacturers exposed to the food service industry are really struggling. Uh, what we are seeing uh, in common between our METS sector and our advanced manufacturing sector is that while sentiment at the moment is predominantly positive, that we're seeing the majority of workflows uh, continue, we're actually seeing an increasing uncertainty around forward pipelines of work. Uh, in particular, in our advanced manufacturing sector, we tend to have a three-month pipeline of booked work for our clients, and that has been decreasing uh, most recently. So we're now looking at certainty for the next six weeks, but a fairly high degree of uncertainty in the work pipeline beyond that. Anecdotally, we're hearing the same thing from our METS clients, that there is some concern about forward pipelines 
uh, with projects being delayed uh, and or terminated. Uh, conversely, we are having pockets uh, within the Met sector where that is not the case. And if you look at the screen on the bottom right-hand side, we can look at sentiment by sector. So this is the Met sector in particular. And you can see the breakdown by state. So um, we're seeing relatively positive outlooks in most states, except for um, South Australia um, and uh, the ACT. Now, I'll just say the ACT is a small sample size, so um, I wouldn't be too deterred by that. Um, and we're seeing that poor sentiment in South Australia across all of our industry sectors, not just in the MET sector. At the top of your screen on the left-hand side is the number one concern. So we've spoken with just over 2,600 businesses one-to-one -one in the last five weeks in response to COVID-19. Uh, and we've been working with them on um, re recalibrating their strategies and recalibrating their cash flow forecasting. What they tell us our number, their number one concerns are there in the word cloud in the top left. So the larger the word, uh, the more often we are hearing that as a number one concern. Our pipelines, long-term um, uh, project outlooks are of main concern within the MET sector uh, and being able to cash flow forecast uh, with um, relative uncertainty beyond the six-month to 12-month mark. On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the number one priority of our businesses uh, at the moment in response to COVID-19. Uh, so here we have cash, uh, unsurprisingly, is one of our major issues, finance and operations. Uh, one of the areas of focus, and particularly in the MET sector, is um, ensuring that the operations are as lean as possible and uh, uh, that we're optimising um, the FTE count and the cash that's being used in the business to be as productive as possible. Marketing and strategy are starting to emerge as uh, bigger issues and concerns within the MET sector. Uh, they weren't uh, predominant in the previous few weeks, but we're starting to see them emerge and be a more significant area of issue. Um, down on the bottom left-hand side, uh, we're looking at uh, projects that our businesses are working on with us and have been working on with us over the last while. Uh, this is specifically for METS businesses. And as you can see, the vast majority of our businesses are, um, are progressing with their projects as planned. Uh, some will be delaying the work that they have been doing with us. Um, and very few are actually stopping uh, their focus. So it's a bit of a mixed bag in the MET sector, um, but uh, predominantly outlook and sentiment far stronger than other areas of our economy at the moment. That's the end of my uh, formal presentation. Um, I'm, uh, we'll be taking questions at midday and responding to those uh, in time. Um, I might just hand back across to our uh, meeting facilitator. Thank you so much, Melissa. That was uh, that was fantastic. Some really um, insightful information and fantastic opportunities for business to engage and get real benefit from the program. So, so thanks for that. Really insightful. Um, just one question, and you you did you did touch on the Met sector and um, you know the sentiment and and some of the insights towards the end of your presentation. But um, in regards to Met's businesses or, or even other businesses. Um, what can they do right now in response to COVID-19 to prepare for some of those um, potential impacts um, as we move into the future? So one of the key areas of focus, obviously, with our businesses at the moment is cash flow forecasting and scenario planning. And those businesses that have used the JobKeeper allowance uh, to help offset some of their uh, drop in revenue and to maintain their employees. Uh, there will be, um, you know, we're hearing quite a lot from all of our businesses uh, that there is concern about a second wave or a second impact coming down the line. And in particular, our METs and advanced manufacturing clients are very concerned, as I mentioned, about forward pipelines and potential for delayed impact through projects being delayed or, or changed. Uh, so we're working one-on-one -on -one with businesses at the moment to take them through cash flow forecasting and modelling, uh, to undertake scenario planning, um, least uh, worst case 
medium case, best case scenario, and in particular looking at three, six, nine, and 12 month horizons. So we're pulling focus back to the near term. Um, we're also working with our METS businesses and our other businesses more broadly and helping them to pivot the way that they undertake business development. Um, traditionally, our METS businesses are what we call business to business businesses, not business to consumer. And the majority of our businesses who operate that way tend to prefer business development face to face, person to person. Uh, and uh, it's quite a shift for many of our businesses to move to digital platforms to undertake business development. Uh, much of the business that's done is long lead sales time. Uh, and that sales funnel really needs to be reapproached and some reconsideration around how long term deep relationships with clients can be reinforced or indeed even built from scratch using digital technologies. Things like this, digital platforms, Zooming with clients, understanding how to build those relationships without being in person. In particular, many of our METS businesses are export focused. Uh, and are used to travelling offshore uh, to undertake person-to-person -person business calls, um, and that's a big change. So we're working with businesses on uh, how do they automate their, their digital marketing, um, how do they develop digital marketing, not to mimic their business-to-consumer peers, but rather in a way that suits their particular business sales funnels. So that's a big area of focus for us going forward. But really, for us, this is an opportunity for our businesses to innovate. Uh, we're asking our businesses where they can to think really um, very carefully about their business models and what the new normal will look like going forward and how they might take advantage of that new normal to build stronger, more resilient businesses. And where possible, given Australia is likely to come out of the COVID-19 uh, scenario faster and in better shape than many of our international developed nation peers, how might we take advantage of that early um, mark and how might we use our natural innovative tendencies to be able to outcompete our global peers who aren't potentially going to be coming out of this as quickly or as, as comfortably as we may do. Fantastic, thank you, Melissa. Um, that was that was great. I think we all we all find ourselves in uh, in a similar situation. So, look, thank you for your time today. We really appreciate it. We know we are very very busy, um, and some great great work being done um, through the Entrepreneurs Program. So, so thank you very much on behalf of um, all of our attendees today and all those businesses across Australia that are uh, taking benefit and hopefully will take benefit in the future. Thanks very Thanks, much, Frank. and that's the end of today's session.